Assalamualaikum, my name is Afifa Khawaja and welcome to Crescent International's Global Forum. Israel's attack on the Gaza flotilla has created a lot of controversy throughout the world. Could you give us your understanding on what happened? Well, the Israeli uh, commando attack on the uh, Freedom Flotilla that was uh, heading towards Gaza, first of all, it was a completely illegal act because uh, this attack was perpetrated in international waters. Uh, the attack occurred about uh, 70 miles off the coast of Gaza. So this was totally uh, in international waters. Uh, these people who were um, going to Gaza, they were planning to deliver uh, food, they were planning to deliver um, baby formula milk, they were planning to deliver sugar and other items of uh, household needs uh, which the people of uh, Gaza desperately need. So it was totally uh, humanitarian aid that was being sent. Uh, secondly, Israel's attack was totally unprovoked and uncalled for. Uh, in fact, the United Nations itself has called uh, the siege of Gaza that Israel has imposed as illegal. There was a resolution uh, in January of 2009 in which the United Nations Security Council demanded that Israel should lift the siege. Uh, to give you just a perspective, uh, Gaza needs something like 2,200 trucks of uh, various kinds of uh, food and medicines on a daily basis. And right now, Israel is allowing less than 200. So you can see that there is desperate shortage of food. The United Nations itself has said that about 80% of the people in Gaza are uh, dependent on UN handouts for food. That's bad. how bad the situation is. So the Israeli assault on the, this peaceful flotilla in which there were uh, international uh, you know, citizens from different countries, from Ireland, not only just from Turkey, but from Pakistan, from England, from America, from Canada, uh, all over the world, uh, there were in fact about 35 or so countries, uh, citizens represented in this. Uh, so the attack was illegal and then the Israeli um, commandos killed uh, nine or ten of these uh, people uh, in the boats. In fact, autopsy reports have shown that some people were shot at least 30 times. There were cameramen, there were photographers, and so it is, a, it is really a horrendous crime that Israel has perpetrated. And of course, the Israeli excuse is that um, uh, they did it because they wanted to defend themselves. Well, this was a peaceful flotilla. They had not gone to attack Israel. Uh, secondly, uh, Israel on the one hand claims that it has withdrawn all of its army from Gaza, which is true, but they have besieged Gaza. So if the Israeli army is out of Gaza, they cannot even use this argument that they are in a state of war against uh, the people of Gaza or the Palestinian people because they are no longer occupying Gaza, but they have besieged Gaza. So no matter which angle we look at it from the legal point of view, from the moral point of view, from the political point of view, uh, I'm afraid uh, Israel is on the wrong. And I think even their friends have now realized that Israel obviously has gone overboard. It has perpetrated uh, terrible crimes and these are unjustified and they cannot defend them. Even the U.S. government uh, felt that, in fact, uh, U.S. President Barack Obama said that the siege of Gaza is unsustainable and that it should be lifted. So we can see from that that obviously uh, this time uh, the Israelis went too far and they would obviously have to pay uh, a price for what they have done. So as we know, the humanitarian ship was a Turkish ship. So how has this crisis affected Israeli-Turkish relations? Well, obviously, um, uh, this attack on the uh, Turkish uh, ships, most of them were Turkish ships, um, apart from Rachel Khoury that was uh, actually um, rented uh, or, or bought over by uh, Ireland. Uh, but the majority of the ships or boats were, were Turkish. Uh, and uh, this has uh, deeply affected uh, Israeli-Turkish relations. Uh, in fact, um, the, the Israeli-Turkish -Turk relations are very long. Uh, Turkey was the first country in the Muslim world to recognize the state of Israel immediately after it was established. And as, a, as an immediate consequence of this attack, uh, Turkey did took several steps. Number one, 
it immediately withdrew its ambassador from Israel. Secondly, it cancelled the military operations that were planned with Turkey. And the, the Turkish uh, president, Abdullah Gul, has said that our relations will never go back to what they were before. And it seems as if the present Turkish government uh, is more and more committed to alleviating the suffering of the people of Gaza. And, and uh, in fact, President uh, Erdogan, he himself said that uh, Turkish friendship is valuable, but uh, tr Turkish uh, enmity is also uh, very strong. And so if anybody uh, ventures in that direction, then they will have to pay a very heavy price. So it seems to me that definitely uh, Israel has dealt a severe blow to Turkish-Israeli uh, relations. And I don't think that they're going to get back to the, the same situation as they were before the May 31st, June 1st uh, attack on this flotilla in which uh, peaceful people were brutally attacked and murdered and uh, brutalized and this aid was prevented from reaching the Gaza Strip. So definitely it has dealt a severe blow to Turkish-Israeli relations, yes. You mentioned before that you believe Turkey is becoming continuously more supportive of the people of Gaza. Do you feel that Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan is actually serious about committing to this process? I personally believe that um, Prime Minister Tayyip Erdogan is a very good man. Uh, he's a man of uh, principles. Uh, and he also has uh, his eye on his place in history. In fact, he already has um, uh, made history by the manner in which uh, he has conducted himself and um, made Turkey uh, more independent of uh, foreign influence, particularly uh, American and Western influence. So I believe that definitely uh, as, as a very good man and, and as a very good Muslim, he feels deeply um, uh, grieved by the suffering of the people of Gaza and he wants to help them and he feels that uh, a great injustice is being perpetrated against the people of Gaza and that as a Muslim and as a great politician uh, he, and a statesman he feels duty bound that he should help them. So in that sense I believe that definitely uh, he is very sincere in this and in fact one can see from that that uh, he has uh, moved uh, Turkey to uh, establish close relations with a number of Arab countries like uh, uh, a couple of weeks after this attack on the flotilla. Uh, he signed an agreement with Syria, Jordan and Lebanon to create a uh, free trade zone and uh, in fact lift um, restrictions on trade and visas between their countries which is a very significant move. And secondly, uh, Erdogan has moved to establish even closer relations with Iran on which, with which it shares a border uh, and, and in fact he was instrumental in facilitating this um, nuclear swap deal with Brazil and Turkey and Iran. So we see that he is moving ahead and he is in fact um, taking on the role of a leading statesman in the Muslim world. So in that sense obviously uh, helping the people of Gaza would enhance his stature and I believe that he is sincere in doing that, yes. Thank you very much for sharing your insight with us on this highly contentious issue. Thank you everybody for watching. I'm Afifa Khawaja for Crescent International's Global Forum.